Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, uh, read before you again uh, the passage which I'm going to comment and which is very clearly alluded to in the title that you um, heard. Everybody knows it, of course, but it's not bad to um, have the, the words resonate again in our, hear, in our ears and, um, and uh, pay attention to some uh, uh, little problems of translation of uh, these words which are not uh, unimportant. So uh, this is towards the end of the, um, um, it's the penultimate uh, paragraph of the dedicatory epistle um, of the prince. Nor do I hold, so this is a translation that I found on the internet. I should have uh, noted uh, uh, who's the other, I forgot, but uh, I don't know if it's famous or infamous. Uh, Nor do I hold with those who regard it as a presumption if a man of low and humble condition, basso e infimo stato, another interesting use of stato, dare to discuss and settle the concerns of princes, because just as those who draw landscapes place themselves below in the plain to contemplate considerare in the Italian, the nature of the mountains and of, and of lofty places, and in order to contemplate the plains, place themselves up on high mountains, even so to understand, which is in Italian, conoscere, the nature of the people, popolo, it needs to be a prince, and to understand that of princes, it needs to be of the people, populare. Another translation which uh, um, been lent by um, um, Warren Montag, translated and edited by Mark Musa, has a somewhat different uh, rendering of the last uh, uh, phrase. In order to know well, conoscere, uh, not simply know, but know well, um, why that? The nature of the people, one must be a prince, and to know well the nature of princes, one must be a common citizen interesting uh, uh, um, nuance to translate populare, uh, which we will retrieve in a, in a, in a, in a moment. Now Machiavelli's commentators uh, um, apparently are less interested in commenting this dichotomy or this dualism than uh, other uh, great dichotomies which uh, play a crucial role in the uh, development of the argument and that have been already addressed in previous papers, such as virtue and fortuna, man and beast, itself divided into lion and fox, princes, hereditary and new, etc. Or they tend to relegate it to considerations on Machiavelli's tactical and rhetorical intentions. Of course, there are exceptions to that, which um, one way or another involve the recognition that the princes, meaning the book, elocutory status makes it impossible to separate the address from the doctrine or analysis or theory. We may hesitate between different terms. Of course, the address is not reducible to a dedication, although the dedication is included in the address. This is a very important metonymy to which we will have to uh, return as well. Let's mention two of these great exceptions, which in many respects are antithetic but also overlap on some points. First one is Leo Strauss, of course, in his thoughts on Machiavelli from 1958. Leo Strauss, in the, in the chapter especially dedicated to the prince, um, uh, asks a, a question which is in fact a very convoluted question. He writes, at first glance, the prince belongs to traditional genre, the mirrors of princes, usually written by counselors, courtiers, uh, seldom secretaries, of course, of state, for legitimate princes concerning the art of governing in a sort of strange, 
private uh, uh, public um, uh, uh, function and they are privately addressed to the prince who is a public figure and therefore they are also uh, uh, rendered uh, uh, public. This image of the, pr of the mirror of course, uh, speculum is an extremely uh, important one which uh, uh, leads to uh, uh, asking in the, in the margin so to speak so to speak the question who is handing the mirror? Uh, now, in fact, uh, if you continue reading uh, Strauss's commentary, uh, it immediately uh, changes uh, uh, side. Um, the prince, meaning the book, Strauss explains, is absolutely not impartial and even less scientific. It's a militant writing. It is a fighting libel covered in the form of a treatise. But, of course, the question is what is it fighting for or whom, perhaps, is it uh, uh, fighting for? And there, um, I continue summarizing uh, Strauss's uh, description. Um, a surprise is uh, awaiting us. This surprise is contained in the last chapter. A surprise which uh, is also in a sense a revelation, the revelation of what lied behind or under the mask. But again this uh, um, revelation involves a sort of uh, redoubling or uh, torsion. Esser principe esser populare means that Machiavelli is representing or impersonating the people while the prince in this case, Lorenzo Medici is representing or impersonating whom? The prince. I mean, that's himself, or perhaps uh, uh, um, a generic figure um, uh, of princes. And uh, uh, the first suggestion would be that uh, these are two complementary viewpoints which epitomize together political wisdom or political knowledge. Machiavelli's intervention uh, from that point of view should help the prince cover his intentions with, uh, in the eyes of the uh, 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 people, which is, as you understand, the reversal of Rousseau's uh, well-known uh, uh, thesis. But then there is a surprise awaiting us within the surprise. The oppositions between prince and people compared to mountain and plain, or high place and low uh, a place, Strauss eventually write, is an absurd one. Why? Because Machiavelli aims, in fact, at intellectually at least dominating the prince, becoming the prince's master or the prince's prince. Therefore, the epistle's allegory should be read as a repetition hidden in plain view of the text's strategy, epitomizing the tradition of double truth, which is in fact the law of political writing or the most important part of it. An opposite reading is provided or offered in Althusser's now very well-known posthumous book, Machiavelli and Us, which I conventionally uh, date from 1976. It was published posthumously after uh, uh, Althusser's death uh, because this is uh, uh, the date uh, indicated at the end of the uh, preface. Um, now, um, this is a, a very different reading, but perhaps not entirely opposite on, a, on every point as you will uh, uh, see. According to Althusser, Machiavelli's discourse is not theoretical, at least in the universalistic sense of the term, for which he takes the example of Montesquieu, somebody on whom he had, of course, already uh, extensively uh, worked uh, himself. This is not a discourse um, like the discourse of science claiming universality without a subject or a specific subject and without an addressee. Um, in fact, it's the best possible example of thinking through writing, I quote, in or under, sous in French, la conjoncture, so in or under the constraint of the political conjuncture to influence it or to produce an effect into it, therefore synonymous with the idea of writing from within a given conflict. Meaning, of course, 
taking sides or choosing a party in the conflict, but which side and which party exactly. And this is where things become more complicated. Esser principe, esser populare, Althusser also comments this uh, formula, of course, uh, in three very dense pages. This alternative, according to him, creates a topological space where the places, he even uses the Greek term topos, of the prince and of the author, writer, or speaker, that is Machiavelli himself, or anybody who would do the same or in, in, in embark on the same kind of um, uh, project, are uh, localized in social and, in fact, political terms. Excuse me. I... So what uh, Machiavelli is saying, according to Althusser, is this. In order to know and hear meaning um, at the same time a cognition and a recognition that will dissipate the misrecognition always already involved in our representation of the political scene. The function, in order to know the function or the nature of the prince, we, one, excuse me, one, um, that is Machiavelli himself, has to occupy the people's place or to adopt the people's viewpoint. A place, of course, is a viewpoint on another place. Hence, the importance of the allegory of the mountain and the plain. Why then does Machiavelli add the symmetric phrase, esser principe, to be able to know the people? This, according to Althusser, is a ruse, is a cunning. It's uh, uh, here that, of course, he has some similarity with uh, uh, Strauss. In uh, French, we would say it's a trompe l'oeil. Uh, it's a fake uh, 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 picture um, uh, that uh, the, reader, the reader will take for uh, uh, reality. And the proof he offers for that is that Machiavelli wrote a book called The, the Prince, but never wrote any book uh, uh, symmetrically uh, called The People because, in fact, he's writing for the people and he's addressing the people. This is a strong, a clever way of using the allegory of the viewpoint or the position, which with, of course, the help of uh, ideas or formulas that come from the Marxist tradition, the class position, a class perspective, in order to uh, articulate the uh, uh, couple of the name, popolo, the people, and the perspective or the viewpoint populare. It's also clever because the dichotomy esser principe, esser populare, indicates not only a duality or a scission, but clearly a conflict which has to be resolved one way or another if a politics is to emerge historically. But there are two difficulties which for us now, at least for me, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, are not to be uh, uh, bypassed and they are uh, uh, related. First, um, uh, is it the case that to adopt the people's viewpoint or place is the same as addressing the people or speaking or, uh, to the, 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 the people. Second, the symmetry that is in Machiavelli's text is um, abolished by Althusser with an argument that in the end is either tautological or teleological. I quoted it. Machiavelli does not write a book called The People or implicitly The Proletariat. Why? Because he's not yet Marx. And I quote from the text, the prince must become popular, but the people is not yet called to become prince. This, of course, refers 
to uh, um, a Gramscian background to which I return. And again, I quote, history is made by the prince from the people's point of view, but the people itself is not yet subject of history. Very strange teleological formulation that Althusser himself had criticized in other contexts. So it seems that it's important to know the prince, but the people can, or perhaps even must, remain unknown, if not unthought. And it is as if Machiavelli is unthinking the place where he stands or speaks from. Here, I believe, we must pause and return to the text. Althusser's question of the topography of conflict is a very good, um, or the question he asks by means of that uh, topography, is a very good question, but answered with a symptomatic bracketing of its own implications, some of its own implications, which Strauss's reference to the mirror may help us formulate. How does a mirroring or specular combination, whether symmetric or dissymmetric, of partial viewpoints, recognition combined with misrecognition, produce a knowledge cognoscere and for whom? Why is it necessary, necessarily bound to the situation of the knowing subject within a conflict or to the development, the transformation of the conflict, what we might precisely call an antithetic epistemology? This is the question that I want now to try to elucidate in two steps. First, return to the letter it's impossible not to try and elucidate more precisely the meaning of the names used in the dedicatory epistle with the help of the theory, so that, in a sense, the theory is within the address, but the address is also within the theory. This is a trope or tropological space, as Judith Butler would say, um, I quote from her famous commentary of Althusser, the topological is also tropological, as Strauss and Althusser and others, in fact, implicitly recognize. Essentially, um, principe and popolo plus populare, qua seen from the other side, are interdependent names, mirroring each other. But they also take us to, or returning to different places in the book if we want to try and define them or clarify their use more precisely. Let's begin with Principe. Of course, uh, the, <laughs> the term is everywhere. We would not need a, 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 a computerized uh, uh, program to identify uh, uh, all the passages. Whether it has different meanings, that's a good uh, uh, um, point to which I uh, return in a sense. But the key I will submit is effectively at the end, as uh, uh, Strauss says, a surprise is awaiting us there in chapter 26. And this is confirmed also by Gramsci, whose passage was quoted by Jacques Lesra earlier, so that I uh, don't have to quote it again, who brings in the important notion of a becoming. To become popular is to be able to understand what the prince must become, that is, a new prince in, in fact, several uh, um, uh, senses of the term, uh, at least uh, uh, two, of course. First, not hereditary. Second, Althusser is very insistent on this, and rightly so, I believe, a prince in an unprecedented uh, 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 meaning of the uh, uh, category. Incidentally, uh, this position takes uh, is exactly the opposite of the one defended by Tony Negri, however brilliant his uh, reading of Machiavelli undoubtedly is, in uh, um, uh, uh, Il Potere Costituente, uh, Negri for whom this final exhortation is in fact ridiculous. It shows the inconsistency of the book, The Prince, compared to the Discorsi, where 
the viewpoint of the constituent power, that is the multitude, is or should be consistently maintained and asserted. The surprise, to call it uh, with Strauss, or the conversion, I'm borrowing from you, borrowing from, from me, and we all borrow from others, uh, which uh, uh, I take it to be uh, Gramsci's uh, um, uh, uh, interpretation uh, in the last chapter, indicates the interest of the people in the transformation of the prince, the becoming new, so to speak, of the prince or the uh, institution of um, uh, principality. But it also explains why it is from the popular viewpoint that the nature of the prince is known or revealed, provided we understand nature here as uh, referring to, uh, uh, to the uh, effect and the idea of differences among types of princes and also uh, among uh, behaviors of the prince, modes of governance, goals of the prince's politics. So the latent idea is that the princes do not know their own nature because they do not really perceive the differences among themselves or in their own behaviors. And why don't they perceive these differences? Because they see themselves as the prince, either a universal figure or a singular incarnation. A relationship of exteriority and in fact, a latent conflict to be resolved is needed, and this can be exhibited only from the people's uh, place. How about the other side? The reference here is perhaps um, easier to find, but it indicates a problematic content. It is, of course, a reference to chapter nine on the civil principate. Uh, in there, uh, extraordinary uh, critical edition that we now all use. Uh, Fournel and Zancarini indicate in the notes that the commentators have been puzzled by this oxymoronic uh, uh, formula. Why? Because civil, essentially in the historical context, means republican. The formula, therefore, is their right loaded with utopia but it also indicates in which paradoxical manner the aims of a republican government can be obtained through its apparent uh, opposite. What is meaningful here, I believe, is the fact that the quotation of the doctrine of the two humors, humori or humores, uh, covering a complex notion as we know, um, and encapsulating um, at the same time the ideas or successively the ideas of class, of interests, and of passions that divides, um, uh, that divide the uh, 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 city can be either uh, understood as a direct use or as a mention that in fact uh, produces already a, a, a transformation if we compare with the context and the uh, explanations provided in uh, the discourse. So Machiavelli is quoting himself in this very explicitly in this uh, uh, passage. And it refers to the fact that uh, this is where the translation with common people and all that uh, betrays uh, um, a, a difficulty which, also, uh, which is also an essential structure. The fact that the people, demos or laos if you like, is composed of what? It's composed of the people and its others. It's composed of the popolo minuto and the popolo grasso or the optimati. It's composed uh, um, of um, uh, the patricians and the people of popular element, also sometimes called il volgo. In Latin it would be multitudo, in Greek it would be to pletos, oi poloi, etc. Um, uh, opposing the grandees, the optimates, or patricians. So the people is at the same time the whole and the part in some sense. 
This is, in fact, the real um, stake of um, the question of the uh, whole objective of knowing the people. Again, a nature that is a difference. To make something of that difference is the uh, objective that uh, the prince sets for himself. The difference, therefore, of the dis with the discoursi is not a difference in the uh, representation of the division of the city. It's a, it's a difference in the um, uh, way it is used and transformed. So it seems to refer to the function rather than the doctrine, because the function, because it's in the prince's interest, that it is the prince's interest that determines the understanding of different outcomes of the class divide or the class uh, struggle. But in the end, it also affects the doctrine because the privileged outcome is not, as in the discourse, the regulation of the conflict through the representation of the people or the plebs within the state, the tribunate of the the plebs producing the imperial power of Rome, it is something slightly and in fact probably uh, um, uh, ultimately very different, the capacity of the prince to govern and maintain his own power. The key passage of course is in paragraph four of the um, uh, uh, chapter nine of which I ask your permission in spite of the time that is quickly running, to uh, uh, read um, a short, no, no, what is that? Oh, it's paragraph four of chapter nine, excuse me. I'm lost in, not in translation, but in, um, uh, yes, that is it. So that's uh, Warren Montax, uh, not translation, but uh, copy. One who becomes prince through the support of the common people, however, should maintain their friendship, which should be easy for him since the only thing they ask of him is that they not be oppressed. Literal quotation from, uh, quasi-literal quotation from the discourse. But one who, contrary to the wishes of the common people, that is in fact in the, um, in the um, uh, uh, text simply populo, uh, becomes prince with the help of the nobles should above all else try to win over the populace, I mean the common people, which should be easy for him once he takes them into his protection. And since all men, when they are well treated by someone they expected, would treat them badly, are more bound to their benefactors, benefactor, excuse me, the common people will quickly become more inclined to him than if he became prince with their help. And a prince can win over the common people in many ways, but since these ways vary according to circumstances, no fixed rules can be, can be established, and therefore I shall not discuss them. I shall conclude by saying only that a prince must keep on friendly terms with the common people, otherwise in adverse times he will find no assistance. You know this passage. So I interpret this in the uh, uh, following manner. The prince must dissimulate from the patricians of the Optimates, who are his equals and therefore potentially his rivals. He has to isolate himself. Race to sovereignty, this is of course a question we cannot uh, avoid, at least from a modern point of view. And I would say in some sense, but probably not every sense of the uh, term with respect to his likes, while not assimilating to the plebeians or even representing them, but forging an alliance with them, called here friendship, inevitably against their internal or common enemies. Here, the antithetic epistemology, excuse me, is brought, I think, very clearly to the fore. We have a combination of essere and cognoscere, cognoscere, uh, I'm lost in the language. Uh, um, it is from the prince's viewpoint that the nature, the meaning and the effects of the antagonism that defines or structures the people as a whole is revealed as a constitutive dissymmetry. On the one side, will to dominate, on the other side, will not to be oppressed. And therefore, in a sense, Althusser 
had right. He perfectly saw this structure. His thesis that the prince demonstrates his prince as a, as a character, demonstrates his capacity of allying with the people through suppressing the grandees or aiming his cruelty more and more visibly at the grandees than at the popular people. But he, Althusser, neutralizes his own thesis by extrapolating in the wake of Gramsci from the final chapter where the Italian people in distress awaiting a savior is allegorically compared, compared to the Hebrew people that, uh, uh, excuse me, my phrase is badly written, extrapolating from there the idea that the people means the same as the nation of a nation state to come, which either encompasses all the differences or teleologically identifies the whole and the part. Conclusion, provisional conclusion, the first clarification of the idea of antithetic epistemology or conflictual epistemology has been reached. Based on the incorporation of antagonism in the quasi-transcendental or empirical transcendental conditions of possibility of knowledge, which is the reverse side of an ontological or quasi-ontological location of knowledge within antagonism. Antagonism appears as the condition of knowledge because knowledge is aimed at handling, practicing, using, transforming conflict. If I had time, I would show the difference with the way in which Pocock in a famous passage um, um, uh, from a Republican uh, uh, point of view um, 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 does the uh, uh, opposite, that is, anticipates the neutralization of antagonisms in a concept of citizenship, whereas Machiavelli, in fact, indefinitely maintains a conflictual pattern of the uh, uh, city or the uh, uh, society. There are two interesting implication, its implications, it seems to me, of this pattern of reciprocal conditioning of antagonism and knowledge. The first is to better understand in which sense Machiavelli's text is anti-utopian. And I prefer the negative formula to any positive formula of the type realistic or materialistic. Um, here we may, of course, remember uh, uh, Spinoza's uh, uh, commentary in the uh, political treatise. Utopia begins with the illusion of a synoptic viewpoint which would be neither on the mountain nor in the plain or valley where, this is of course the question implicitly asked here, located on which Archimedean point uh, out of the Platonic uh, uh, cave, of course, that is either in God or in reason or in the light of uh, the clearance, I'm tempted to say, of the good and the true uh, as uh, 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 such, which in the tradition, uh, philosophical tradition, is either ascribed to the sovereign or to the philosopher or to their couple. Second conclusion, what is the place of the theorist in relation to the prince or more generally to the ruling function, the ruler's function? This place is immanent to the conflict but it is not stable because it does not see the conflict as stabilized. The place I would submit is a displacement. It could be described first as a supplement introduced in order to make use of the conflict. The prince must emerge, rise as a third, dissimulate, as I said, from the patricians without assimilating to the plebeians, differentiating himself from both, thus producing a dynamic difference within the difference which transforms the relationship among the conflicting parties in order to produce the political effect, which is also the power effect, in fact, his own power. But it's also a displacement in the topological sense. The prince migrates from one side to the other, from one support 
to the other in a modality that can be explained only from the people's point of view, from the point of view of the interests of the people. Reason why the political writer is no longer exactly a counselor, I would uh, 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 suggest, um, in spite of many uh, um, uh, commentators and readers of Machiavelli who uh, uh, put him in that uh, uh, line, uh, has to intellectually, but we know also morally and passionately, occupy this place, uh, which otherwise would uh, remain obscured and suppressed. Do I still have a little bit of time or no? Five minutes, and that's difficult. Okay, so I will embark quickly, as quickly as I can, in a second wave of uh, reading, taking into account at the same time the latent problems of the topography that can be identified as a guiding thread or matrix of Machiavelli's antithetic epistemology and the conflicting effects that it produces among its readers, its readers, interpreters, especially those who push this idea to the extreme, that is, identify the very possibility of understanding politics with the adoption of a partisan viewpoint. I may have to skip that. The latent problems or difficulty arise from the fact that a logical double bind is involved in this notion of immanent or quasi-transcendental division of the knowing subject, and I think it would be better to say of the agency or practice of knowing or understanding the political matter. What is exactly the opposite of synoptic or comprehensive or totalizing discourse? Here I suggest to um, recur to Deleuze's notion, equally enigmatic in a sense, of a disjunctive synthesis which maintains the separation, the incompatibility of the parts while bringing them together or forcing them to enter the same place that is a discursive place, staging, uh, so to speak, within discourse, a place for the presentation of antagonism or conflict as such. We may want to discuss this double bind at two successive levels, formal and historical in the sense of historiography, philology, and doxography. Formally, my suggestion is the following, try and relate the uncertainty I had written of fluidity, this was before Jacques Lesra uh, uh, brought this extraordinary illustration um, uh, of this notion through the metaphor of the um, uh, violent uh, 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 river, which uh, uh, incidentally, of course, uh, is part of the same complex uh, uh, um, uh, metaphoric um, and allegoric uh, uh, game because the rivers flow from the mountain into the uh, uh, valleys. Uh, uh, then, of course, the consequence is that if uh, um, we are thinking in terms of river, it's uh, impossible even absurd to try and imagine a river that would climb back onto the uh, mountain. So we might have to change uh, then from one uh, natural uh, uh, realm to another and suggest that something like a wind should now uh, 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 blow in that uh, uh, direction. Fluidity, of course, also refers to the fluidity of the humores, but I uh, uh, come to this in a minute. So. Um, relate the uncertainty or fluidity of Machiavelli's counting of places within the social political structure with the issue um, uh, of dissymmetry within the epistemic topography. In other terms, what I suggest is to interpret the Machiavellian dispositive of power and knowledge as a mobile and to some extent reversible relationship, both of power and knowledge, which would make of course, for interesting confrontations with Foucault, or perhaps push us to e try and interpret the symptomatic fact that Foucault carefully avoids explicitly discussing Machiavelli in every text that I know. The places are always, at the same time, in some sense, positions of power and positions of knowledge. 
The new prince will not be able to exercise the power on the people and on the people's humores, conflicts of passions and interests, if the prince does not know the structure or nature of the people. Knowledge, therefore, is a moment and an instrument of the prince's empowerment, perhaps with the help of some theorist. The reverse is true on a minor key. In Discourse 1-4, Machiavelli writes, that is the chapter on civil conflict as the source of Rome's power, quoting Cicero, albeit ignorant, the peoples are capable of understanding truth. The latent idea in the prince, it seems to me, is even stronger. The people, or the popular element of the people, supports the prince's politics in as much as it actively knows the prince's nature, that is, discriminates among types of principalities and modes of princely government, first by experiencing them and experiencing its uh, uh, um, uh, cruelty and degrees of cruelty, but also by calculating and anticipating their consequences. But above all, the political writer, that is Machiavelli himself, and perhaps others before him, after him, will wage a power, they will produce an effect in the distribution of power, a redistribution of power, so to speak, however aleatory or uncertain this effect remains, through the knowledge that he, the writer, acquires and divulgates in an accessible manner to the parts involved in the conflict, not speaking a double truth, this is not the right interpretation, I believe, but aiming at different, essentially two readerships as, at the same time. I had written this before um, uh, Banu Bagu privately asked the question, who is the audience, the readership of uh, uh, um, uh, um, Machiavelli's uh, 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 prince? And I would uh, tentatively answer all the parts in all places, but in a differentiated manner, omnes et singulatim. This leads to interpreting the relationship between the uncertain counting of places and the dissymmetry of positions in a more dynamic way as implications of the idea of displacement which involves a temporary mediation, a vanishing mediator, to put it once again with Frederick Jameson. The basic structure, of course, or distribution of places is a dualistic one. Patricians versus plebeians, or popolo grasso versus popolo minuto with dissymmetric interests, as we know. It is supplemented twice in the um, development of the um, uh, uh, scenario, with the adjunction of the prince isolating himself, and with the adjunction of the writer performed in the publication of the book called The Prince. So two becomes three and three becomes four. But the virtual tendency is a return to a situation of duality which has been transformed in its quality or its political composition. There will remain an uncertainty in this transformation, almost certainly so. We are not to be able to fix Machiavelli's elusive theoretical strategy on this point. One could say the result is a regulated conflict between patricians and common people, if you like, with the prince as mediator or regulator, or the result is a more or less stable ruling of the prince over the people in the objective interest of the people through the neutralization of the patricians, grandees, which may even involve their partial elimination. In any case, one has to pass from an apparent symmetry to a real dissymmetry, which nevertheless incorporates or integrates the dominated viewpoint within the dominant viewpoint or the exercise of domination. And this can be done only through the vanishing mediation of the writer who at the same time exhibits in discourse the heterogeneity of uh, the, the, the structure and migrates from one place to the other, reversing the place of truth on power, disrupting the illusion of a self-knowing power or, if you prefer, an absolute knowledge of power. 
it is probably useful here to compare, I'm nearly, I will cut the uh, final development, to compare with an Aristotelian notion of the reciprocity of places involved in the definition of citizenship. This description in book three of Aristotle's politics also involves, as we know, uh, power, uh, an element of power and an element of knowledge. It's the famous um, uh, 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 circulation of the citizen between the place of magistrate and subject, archon and archomenos. To learn how to command, one has to experience obedience, and the text is a little equivocal on this point. To learn how to obey, or perhaps why to obey, one has to experience command. This is purely dualistic. The power here involves, or is supposed to involve, no real antagonism. In Machiavelli's scheme, a distance, a distanciation, if you prefer, has to be created or perhaps revealed because it was always already there. It has also to be allegorized by the, through the idea of the landscape. There is something like a political landscape, landscape which is no longer to be abolished, but is to be used by the writer who takes one side or occupies one place in order to teach the prince and the people how to incorporate the consideration, the handling of their other into their own political strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I, ask I, I apologize for, for the length abusing of the time. I had uh, a final development on traces of this in contemporary uh, 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 writers, essentially Schmidt, Tronti, and Althusser, but that was, of course, much too ambitious for the time I could occupy. Thank you so much. So I ask Philippe, how much time uh, do we have? <laughs> Si, si, si. We, we take some, we take some question and then uh, Etienne uh, will answer. So, uh, thank you, Etienne. So you begin with this dualism between uh, uh, prince and people, but in fact, your whole talk is about the third. It's about the, the philosopher, yeah? In all mirror of princes, you always have three, as you said. You call it the writer, but in fact, you're talking about the philosopher, yes? Who, who can neither... It's certainly abusive to call Machiavelli a philosopher. No, no, but in the tradition, in the tradition of the mirror of princes, there is a, a third character, so to speak, who is neither a prince nor people, but talks about both of them. And I'm calling that the philosopher. You, you say the writer. So my question to you, though, is, has to do with the final, I didn't understand your final thesis about the location of this writer. So if I understand what you're saying, the writer, let's call it the philosopher, is the one that brings up the nature of the antagonism, both in the people, the prince, and so on. But then I didn't understand why you think this writer or philosopher has to be situated in one place, so to speak. I, I, if you could clarify that, because it seems to me that, um, definitely in Strauss and perhaps also in Althusser, there's a sense in which this third figure is precisely can never be identified either with the people nor with the prince. So that, that, that was the sense of the question. Thank you so much for raising this difficult... Took some, uh, we take some... Uh, no, no, I no. cannot follow. I, I will okay. make it very quick. Um, um, uh, first of all, um, I draw a lot from, I'll just say clearly, it's in a sense, it's a kind of uh, um, uh, derived, I would say, um, a, a version of his uh, 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 commentary. Um, uh, a point that is um, uh, crucial in Althusser's interpretation is the idea that um, the dispositive creates an empty place uh, but in fact, this en empty place is uh, redoubled. I mean, there are two uh, 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 empty places, one for the prince 
and one for the philosopher or if you like uh, or, or the writer as I, as, I, as I said I don't think we have a good uh, term in any case the one who writes the prints that's why I use the term and this is the tropological uh, 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 scheme so it's not only a third but it's a third that it becomes replicated and so in a sense it's an apparatic uh, uh, um, uh, uh, scheme the, the basic uh, 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 conflict is between the people and the, and the, and the, and the optimates and the grandees. It's displaced through the introduction of the prince and in turn again displaced through the introduction of the uh, uh, writer into the scheme. Which leads me to your um, uh, uh, essential uh, 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 question. Why should the writer uh, uh, intellectually and therefore also politically in as much as his uh, understanding is in fact a way of doing politics on the side of the uh, uh, people and here I would try uh, I have to make uh, it short to uh, um, uh, use uh, Althusser against himself or something of Althusser against himself Althusser's explanation in his book, and I'm sure others will talk about that, is that, uh, in fact, as he uh, explicitly writes, Machiavelli, uh, 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 Machiavelli's class position uh, is on the side of the uh, 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 people. And my uh, uh, suggestion is the essential function of the writer is to dissipate the ideology of power. I mean, it's to dissipate the illusion that princes inevitably uh, 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 share that they know uh, uh, of them uh, uh, themselves. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, it's, to, it's to hand a mirror that will uh, show the prince an image radically uh, 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 different from the one he's expecting. Euh, moi, deux questions assez simples. Euh, la première, c'est que euh, on sait philologiquement parlant que la lettre de dédicace que nous commençons par lire quand nous ouvrons le prince est en fait le dernier texte qu'il a écrit. Donc, comme toujours, comme toujours. Mais donc, euh, euh, ça, ça complexifie un peu le, le statut de, de l'énoncé de la lettre de dédicace. Est-ce qu'on ne doit pas en tenir compte dans le, le type de, de, de développement que, que vous nous proposez Ça, c'est la première question. Et la deuxième question, euh, elle concerne le, le ton, si je puis dire, machiavélien. Il y a un ton chez Machiavel, je crois que c'est important de s'en souvenir. Euh, et euh, ce qu'il peut y avoir, notamment dans le passage que vous commentez, euh, pour partie d'ironique chez Machiavel, chez, chez l'écrivain, justement. Là, je suis, je suis d'accord, moi, je ne dirais pas le philosophe, je dirais enfin, celui qui écrit, effectivement, celui qui écrit le prince. En, en l'occurrence, à ce moment-là, il arrive au bout du processus d'écriture et c'est le fait d'être arrivé au bout du processus d'écriture qui lui donne l'autoritas, la légitimité, pour, effectivement, traiter d'égal à égal avec celui à qui il s'adresse. Y compris, si vous prenez euh, la phrase qui suit celle que vous avez commentée, euh, il y a une incise qui est, qui est étonnante et que je crois on ne doit pas prendre euh, purement dans son sens rhétorique. Pilia donc, vostra magnificenza questo piccolo dono, con quello animo che io il mando, il quale se da quella si fia diligentemente considerato e letto. Donc, euh, ça veut dire qu'il pose la question de savoir si le prince est capable, a les capacités, a le savoir nécessaire hein, pour être au niveau de ce que lui-même propose. Euh, alors, on peut y voir de l'ironie, aussi autre chose que de l'ironie. Enfin, je, je pense qu'à mon avis, il faut en tenir compte voilà, dans, le, dans ce propos. Je suis, je suis complètement d'accord. Je suis complètement d'accord avec ce que tu, euh, ce que tu proposes. Euh, pour ce qui est du fait que le, euh, euh, le, le texte de la dédicace soit euh, probablement, on peut le supposer, bon, euh, écrit non pas à l'avance quelles qu'aient été les intentions de Machiavel, mais après coup, euh, c'est une, une façon très, très, très juste et très euh, euh, frappante euh, d'introduire dans notre lecture, dans notre interprétation, euh, ce que j'ai appelé la, 
un peu pompeusement euh, 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 la situation illocutoire, c'est-à-dire la, la, la dépendance euh, euh, réciproque, au fond, de la... De, de, de l'analyse ou, ou, de, ou, de, ou de la théorie et de, et de, la, et de, et de la force ou de, ou de, ou de, ou de l'effet que, que le texte veut produire. Hein, bon. Mais euh, 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 en effet, de ce point de vue, il a, merci de la suggestion, il n'aurait pas été inutile euh, euh, d'ajouter la, 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 euh, la phrase suivante, parce que euh, la phrase suivante, je, 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 je l'interprète comme toi, contient une question terriblement ironique, en effet. Euh, Laurent, c'est à vous que je dédie ce livre, parce que les circonstances m'y amènent. Hein, bon. euh, êtes-vous êtes un prince quel, quel prince êtes-vous hein, Quel prince euh, seriez-vous capable d'être C'est encore plus étrange que finalement le texte a été publié après sa mort, mais enfin bon, ça c'est... Bon, ça, donc, c'est n'importe qui qui... Euh, bon. bon, donc, euh, ça, si je me suis fait comprendre, euh, comme discriminer entre les conduites, les vertus, et finalement, les, 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 les types euh, de, 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 de princes, ou les différentes façons de esser principe, et par excellence, du point de vue de Machiavel, une fonction populaire, hein, une fonction populaire, euh, c'est une question qu'il lui pose, c'est pour ça qu'elle est Très, très, très ironique, exactement en tant qu'il se place ici dans cette position, euh, dans cette position basse. Hein. Bon, je me, me retiens d'essayer de, de, de tout, tout amener à la fois et d'interpréter d'autres euh, contextes discursifs dans lesquels il est question de, de voir le haut depuis le bas. Enfin bon, ça pourrait. Bon. Mais euh, euh, je serais tenté d'ajouter, évidemment, je serais tenté d'ajouter que euh, euh, l'ironie. Euh, je suis Paul Demand, etc. Bon, l'ironie dans le sens le, le, plus, le plus complet du terme euh, n'est jamais euh, euh, purement et simplement à sens, euh, à sens, à sens, à, à, à sens unique. Hein. C'est-à-dire qu'elle elle, elle met aussi euh, en question le, le statut de celui qui, qui l'emploie ou de celui qui tient le, 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 le discours. Donc, euh, euh, c'est pour ça qu'on ne peut pas adopter purement et simplement le point de vue euh, rousseauiste ou le point de vue rousseauiste euh, euh, renversé par, euh, euh, par Strauss. Parce qu'on on ne réussira pas à faire en sorte que euh, la position de savoir si vous, ou, la, ou, la, ou, la, ou la place de la, de la connaissance soit... Euh, euh, localisé une fois pour toutes et de façon stable dans un des, 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 des côtés du, 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 du rapport. Um, thinking to the metaphor or your title, the mountain and the plain, uh, it seems to me that it's not dealing with mirroring, but rather than with distance. Uh, What is important to know is to stay in another place. And thinking to the word invented by Todorov, exotopy, to translate another in invented word, exotopy, 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 en français, uh, to translate another invented word, a uh, word invented by Bakhtin, the, na the Nakodimost. And that, that's described exactly the, the condition of being in another place. Now, the, the problem is, uh, where is exactly Machiavelli? Uh, is it not on top of the mountain? In the prince, he is on top of the mountain. He, he was on the mountain of rulers. And also physically, he was physically present at many events he describes uh, in the prince. So maybe he moved from the top of the mountain to the plain. And that's what he's trying to say to the prince. Uh, and in a way, he's saying two things. I'm no longer on top of the mountain. And maybe he's saying, but uh, my knowledge is still valuable for you. So is it possible that it's, it's, he's describing his condition rather than the difference between the, the position of the prince uh, and the people? I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, of course, if we uh, if we embark on uh, uh, ourselves uh, uh, elaborating on the on the on the image and therefore uh, having our 
uh, imagination uh, uh, work uh, uh, on this uh, on this topography we are led we must be careful but uh, we are led to um, uh, asking not only where does Machiavelli uh, stand he says it uh, but uh, what's the more uh, comp complex or complete uh, a story behind uh, uh, that. Uh, so, uh, where did he? So, I suggested, I did my best to suggest that uh, the static uh, uh, representation of the topography has to become interpreted in dynamic uh, uh, terms in every sense because uh, the positions that are described here or identified here are conflictual uh, uh, positions, so they are not just one aside the other. Uh, you would not say that the mountain is, uh, is, 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 is conflicting the, 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 the valley, but you have to say that the prince and the, and the, and, and, and the people are in a conflictual uh, uh, relationship, which is ever. So, um, I, uh, and second, I tried, I tried to uh, uh, suggest that and that's a bit uh, uh, convoluted uh, uh, um, uh, way of speaking, that um, the writer or the writer's explanation, knowledge, understanding as it's, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a displacement. Uh, now, I completely agree with the idea that the displacement essentially involves a, a distanciation, a, a distanciation. But then you may want to ask, uh, if this is a displacement, it's something like a, a travel, uh, where did the traveler start and where is the traveler ending? Or perhaps returning? And, and I would welcome the idea that, in a sense, the traveler, that is the writer, not Machiavelli himself, that was not how he began in life, but those mentioned, for example, by Strauss as others of uh, mirrors of the princes, etc., or uh, uh, um, uh, what the commentators, Raymond Aron has a remarkable text on, 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 uh, on that. He compares, uh, and he didn't invent it, uh, the figure of Machiavelli as a counselor of the prince with the figure of Marx as a confidant of destiny or the providence. Uh, this is against uh, 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 essentially. So maybe there was something like a counselor of the prince uh, uh, at the beginning, but what Machiavelli says implicitly is I'm leaving that place. I'm no longer a counselor of the uh, uh, prince. I'm moving to a different place which n uh, no counselor will uh, 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 ever uh, occupy. Nevertheless, this is not the same as becoming uh, 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 the head of a popular uh, party which uh, uh, aims at unsettling uh, the, 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 the prince's uh, uh, power. It's just the uh, uh, opposite, maybe in the interest of the, in the ultimate interest of the, of the people, but certainly not, certainly not by uh, uh, trying to undermine the prince's uh, uh, power. Uh, here, my adversary, if you like, uh, and I said it in, in, in passing, is Tony Negri. We have to keep the uh, complete uh, uh, spectrum of meanings of the term potere. Uh, uh, it's potestas and it's uh, uh, potentia as well. So if you locate the uh, 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 potentia uh, always already on the side of the people and you describe uh, uh, the prince's power as a potestas that uh, uh, can only uh, appropriate and exploit the people's, uh, the people's power, you're bound to lose this uh, um, uh, dialectics, I agree uh, uh, with you, it's not Hegelian at all, of course, of the uh, 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 traveling or, 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 or uh, uh, dis, dis, distancing uh, 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 function of, of, of knowledge in, in Machiavelli's uh, um, uh, Understanding and above all performance, I would say. 
The last two questions, uh, Fabio Frosini and Banu Bargo, because we are a little bit in late. <coughs> Etienne, I'm not sure I remember uh, exactly, but I think you have uh, made no reference to chapter 6 of The Prince, the, where uh, Machiavelli defines the uh, verità effettuale della cosa, the effectual truth of, of, of thing, and to chapter 16 of uh, book 1 of Discourses. Verità effettuale della cosa is not chapter 6, it's chapter 15. Uh, excuse me, chapter 15, yes. Uh, well, uh, in, uh, in, in chapter 15, he writes that uh, uh, there is a, um, uh, an effectual truth of thing uh, that is the resul result of uh, a, a, an imaginary uh, uh, circulation of reputation. Hmm? And he writes that, uh, uh, Machiavelli uh, writes that uh, th th this is true for uh, all people, but uh, eminently for the prince because he is per essere collocato più alto, no? Because he's uh, let's, let's say, more, more visible. I, I would like to, to know if, uh, if, if, if this point can be included in your interpretation. And then the other point, the other question is um, chapter uh, 16, book 1, where uh, Machiavelli, in my opinion, gives a definition of what, uh, what he means with uh, to know, no? Conos conoscere. Chapter 16 of the Prince. No, no, chapter no, 16 of book one of this course, where, 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 yes. where he writes that yeah, the yeah, people yeah, yeah. Okay, who okay, was okay, governed... I understand, I understand, I understand. Yes, yes. Uh, where, 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 where he says, uh, conoscere is saper ragionare delle pubbliche accuse. Hmm? That, that's to say, uh, to have um, uh, an education, no? a practice, a common practice mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in the art of discuss what, what the title of discourse, uh, uh, the very title of discourse is, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, is, is, is this point, uh, is possible to include this point also in your interpretation? Probably. <laughs> I didn't think of uh, 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 returning there. This is, uh, this shows that I worked uh, 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 too quickly in a, in a, in a in a sense, but um, um, okay, I leave it uh, 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 open. Just uh, elaborating uh, 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 the question in the um, in the following manner: uh, discutere is a very interesting uh, uh, a notion, of course, which uh, uh, can travel itself between uh, uh, between. Um, uh, poles, uh, so it's uh, it, it's uh, I won't say it's a it can be understood in a Habermasian way as a, as a, 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 a discussion or a, or a, a, a dialogue, but it may um, the, the it it may fluctuate. I would uh, I would I would I would I would suggest between a civil uh, 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 conversation and the manifestation of a, uh, uh, a conflict that is not uh, that is never entirely uh, uh, reducible. So in the first case, you don't need the writer. Uh, I, 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 it seems to me, or perhaps not. Uh, Perhaps I'm wrong. Not in an organic uh, way. Or the writer is only the one who describes uh, 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 the discussion. But he, he's not the one who, as I suggested, uh, sets the discursive, uh, 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 the paradoxical discursive stage on which the irreducibility of the conflict is presented as uh, 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 such. I don't know if this answers uh, or elaborates your question. And as for the uh, question of uh, verita effettuale della cosa, of course, I was uh, uh, thinking of that and ultimately I would be uh, 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 trying to uh, 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 say something about a, um, a, a concept of truth, which is uh, um, practical, if you, if you, if you, if you like, but um, um, which which cons which which consists which consists in the uh, essentially whose 
whose function is essentially a negative uh, 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 function, that is to uh, unveil, as I was, and, and deconstruct, I was saying to Miguel uh, uh, Vatter, every uh, uh, illusion that um, uh, um, uh, antagonisms can be uh, 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 synthesized, I mean, uh, or uh, uh, tot totalized. I mean, that's, uh, that's, uh, I had, uh, uh, that's also why I had uh, Pocock's uh, uh, text with uh, me, in which he uh, very uh, uh, clearly says that ultimately the points of view are complementary. Uh, and uh, and the truth is this complementarity. Yeah? So, and I'm tempted to say the truth is not the complementarity; it's the irreducibility of the uh, uh, conflict itself. Banu, yes. Um, thank you. Uh, my question is about the mirror. About about the mirror. The mirror. Yes. As an object and as a metaphor for a knowledge effect or a truth effect. Um, so once you have spoken of an antithetic epistemology, and I take it that you're opposing this, say, to a positivist epistemology, um, when you say then a, a reversible dispositive, are we simply now imagining that we are reversing the mirror? Or is it that um, at the end of your presentation, you said the function of the, of the uh, writer, of the theorist, is about dissipating the ideology of power. So is this simply reversing the mirror, or do we have to think of a different object? Of a different object. Object to represent um, this process, or is the mirror changing? Is it a... Uh, uh, is it the same reflection, or is it a, con a concave mirror, a convex mirror, or is the mirror also shattering mm. in mm. some ways when you introduce that conflictual epistemology? Well, you're putting the finger on <laughs> something that, again, in my uh, discourse as it exists now, is, uh, is a little shaky. Um, I... Um, I uh, uh, couldn't uh, prevent from uh, um, uh, hijacking, if you like, the name mirror from where it appeared in Strauss's uh, 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 discourse with an institutional uh, 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 reference, of course, and uh, 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 begin, I would say, um, uh, elaborating uh, the um, uh, idea of dissymmetry within symmetry, uh, if you like, uh, through a uh, complexification or a, a redoubling of the idea of the mirror. So, of course, uh, I was also... Uh, <laughs> this is very shaky. I mean, it's not... Uh, I was also uh, driven by uh, uh, an implicit uh, 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 reference to what I take to be uh, uh, one of Althusser's uh, best uh, uh, formulas to encapsulate uh, the uh, nature or the essence of uh, uh, ideology, that is recognition that is misrecognition at the same uh, uh, time. This is, of course, so, so, so I, 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 I started um, uh, suggesting that if there's not only one mirror, but there are uh, uh, at least two, and they're not uh, exactly mirroring each other, I mean, this is not an infinite process of uh, uh, repetition, but this uh, uh, strangely, strangely uh, 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 produces on uh, each side images which are no longer uh, uh, entirely compatible, if you if you if you if you like, or complementary, precisely, uh, uh, we uh, uh, get to uh, a different uh, um, uh, a different uh, um, uh, a picture of uh, uh, what um, uh, knowing means. But I have to admit that I cannot carry with me uh, the terminology and the image of the mirror 
until the uh, uh, end. So what I say at the end is not clearly related to the uh, mirror uh, mirroring function in my in my in my mind. Thank you very much.